This is part 3 of the ship's generator overhaul series. It's been 4 days since we began dismantling the generator engine, and so far we have been able to pull out all the relevant parts, then inspected, measured, and reconditioned them all. It's now time to reassemble the engine. First up are the cylinder liners. Putting them back is pretty much straightforward as we only need to put on a new o-ring, apply some grease on it, and then lower it down into the engine block. We just need to keep it aligned in the proper direction when lowering. There are no screws to tighten as the cylinder heads will be the ones to hold them in place. Once all the liners are in, next will be the connecting rod big end bearing caps to be installed on the crankshaft. After that, it's time for the pistons. Installation of the pistons are aided by a special tool, which is placed directly on top of the cylinder liner. The interior of this tool is tapered like a funnel, and once the piston rings make contact during lowering, they will be slowly pressed into the piston ring grooves, allowing the piston to easily slide into the cylinder liner. The piston rod will then be reattached to the connecting rod bearing cap. During the course of our reassembly, however, an unexpected situation happened to the running generator. A cooling oil leakage occurred at the bottom part of the turbocharger. This was a bit of an emergency since we no longer had a standby generator. 
So we shifted our focus on it for the time being. Our priority is to have at least two fully functioning generators, one running and one on standby. We only needed to replace some damaged O-rings, so this was a quick job. But it was necessary to lift the turbocharger in order to access them. Since we already exerted a lot of effort in removing the turbocharger, we decided to clean some of the parts like the blades and the nozzle ring. Once everything was ready, we went ahead and reinstalled the turbocharger. This job took us around two hours to complete. Over the past few days, reconditioning of the cylinder heads have been ongoing, but now they are all ready to be put back in service. Since all the pistons have already been installed, it's time to put the cylinder heads back on. Once all of them are installed and tightened, the smaller parts like the high pressure pipes for the fuel injection pumps and the rocker arm assembly, among other things, are slowly put in their place.
for the rocker arms, the tappet clearance must be set according to the instruction manual. This clearance will give the intake and the exhaust valve stems some room for thermal expansion. Once all of the parts are installed, jacket water, lubricating oil, and fuel oil is circulated to prepare the engine for startup. So finally, the number three generator is all boxed up and ready for testing. So we will conduct a no load test or idle running today. So let's go check it out. First, we carry out an air blow. And now, it's time to start the engine. Initially, we had to push on the fuel pump racks to help in the fuel injection. But since our fuel injection pumps are also due for overhauling, this was actually expected. Okay, so testing is done for now. Job well done to everyone. Yes. Especially to Oi. third engineer. Uh, <laughs> all in all, this job took us around six working days to complete. Roughly about 60 hours. I wasn't able to shoot footages of every single thing we did because there were times that I had to do something else. But more or less, what I've shown in this series is pretty much how the engineers on board cargo ships carry out a generator engine overhaul. Okay, so that's all for now. <laughs>